Hello there and welcome to Exam AZ-900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is Episode 58, Azure Service Level Agreements. My name is Tim Warner. Today's skill starts in the AZ-900 Functional Group Describe Azure Pricing, Service Level Agreements, and Life Cycles, passes through Describe Azure SLAs, and we're actually going to cover a number of atomic skills. I figured it was best to address them together. We've got Describe an SLA, Describe Composite SLAs, and Describe how to determine an appropriate SLA for an application. Go to timw.info forward slash az900sg for an interactive table of contents of this Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. Let's get to work. A service level agreement, or an SLA, is a contract between a provider and a customer. The Microsoft Azure SLAs are Microsoft's guarantees for their Azure services, specifically their performance level and or their uptime or availability. If Microsoft violates the SLA, they will normally grant you service credit on your next invoice. You should know that each Azure product has its own service level agreement, and as of this recording in late July 2020, there are nearly 200 services. So yes, knowing where to go to find out an SLA is an important skill for any Microsoft Azure professional, and I'll make sure to teach you that in our demo today. You should also know that public preview features, as well as release or generally available Azure features that are running at the free or shared tiers are normally exempt from Azure SLAs. You can see on the right side of the slide a table from the Microsoft Learn website that shows different numbers of nines as they're called. In other words, uptime or availability percentages from 99% all the way to 99.999%. That's five nines of availability. And it's interesting to see what that shakes out to as far as allowed downtime per week, per month, or per year. Many Azure services have a 99.95% SLA, and that would mean that per week, Microsoft could down that service for up to five minutes before they would be in violation and would owe you service credit. A composite SLA is more real world because let's face it, your solutions in Azure are likely composed of multiple Azure services. On the right side of the slide, for example, we have a web app that's running an Azure App Service. Azure App Service generally has a 99.95% SLA, but the application is actually working in conjunction with an Azure SQL database, which has four nines of SLA availability. How do you determine a composite service level agreement? Well, it's basically probabilities and statistics. What you do is you multiply the availabilities together. So in order to get a composite or overall SLA for this web application and database combination, we have 99.95 times 99.99, which gives you a composite SLA of 99.94%. So the way the math always shakes out here is that the combined probability of failure is higher than the individual SLA values. Okay, Microsoft maintains an entire website at azure.com for their Azure service level agreements, and that's what we're looking at right here. I normally find this page, well, I have it bookmarked, but before that, I would just do a Google search for Azure SLAs, and it'll get you here very quickly. Because the Microsoft Azure product family is so enormous, Microsoft breaks it into groups, as you can see here. If we were interested in virtual machine-related service level agreements, for example, we would find the compute section, and then we can see within there, we have virtual machines, scale sets, functions. Again, the theme is there's an SLA for every product that's in GA or generally available status. Let's take a look at the individual SLA policy for virtual machines. These are normally updated fairly regularly. You can see that this one was updated in July 2020. And guess what? I'm recording this video in July 2020. Microsoft does a pretty good job of maybe not avoiding legalese or legal jargon, but they write it in a way where you don't have to be an attorney to understand. However, I found that these SLA documents do require that you understand the service. So number one, you want to skill up on what the service is, in this case, virtual machines. And number two, then you'll want to inspect the SLA so you know what to expect. This one here is talking about availability based on how you've deployed virtual machines. So you see in the first bullet point, 
if you've deployed two or more instances using availability zones, you get 99.99% availability SLA. Second bullet point, if you've deployed two or more instances of a virtual machine in availability set, that's 99.95. Or you have the single instance SLA if you have a singleton virtual machine that's using premium or ultra disk storage for all disks, not just the OS disk, but for data disks, you get 99.9%. And then it goes on from there. I just wanted to show you a representative service level agreement document so you can get familiar with it. Lastly, in the portal, I just want to come back to something we looked at earlier in the study guide, and that was Azure Service Health. A quick way to see if Azure is having a problem on Microsoft's side would be to log into the portal and dial up Service Health. Recall that this will show you by default service issues. In other words, Microsoft side problems that are going to affect your resources, because as you can see here, the view is filtered only to the regions that you're using. And while you're here, you can see any planned maintenance events. And it looks like as of this recording, there's some Azure SQL VM service maintenance. I have a VM that's running SQL, so this definitely is applicable to me. And you can select it and then come down below and read all about it. Learning resources, number one, the Azure SLA homepage is timw.info forward slash SLA1. For a lesson on composite SLA calculation from Microsoft, go to timw.info forward slash SLA2. And for a Microsoft Learn lesson, timw.info forward slash SLA3. Thanks a lot for your attention. I appreciate you very, very much. The next episode, we're going to cover the Azure Service Lifecycle. In the meantime, follow my Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. While we're on the subject, please feel free to follow my YouTube channel. My Pluralsight courses are at timw.info forward slash PS. That's where I make my living full time. And my website is techtrainertim.com. I'll see you at the next lesson. Happy studying.